Parallax. A very odd word, right? Well, before we talk about what that word means today, let's talk about where it came from. Parallax is derived from the Greek word parallaxis, which means alteration. Now, this makes sense when you get a grasp of what parallax is. In layman's terms, parallax is the apparent change in position of an object relative to its background. Still sound confusing? Well, there is a little experiment you can perform to see how this works. It's really simple and requires nothing but your thumb. First, take your hand and stick your thumb upright like in the diagram. In the diagram, it shows my thumb in front of a TV. If there's no TV, just try and find some object or any sort of background to place your thumb in front of. Now, be seated or standing a few meters away from that background. Now, focus and look at your thumb. The diagram is a rough interpretation of what you should see. Now, close your left eye. This diagram should resemble what you now see. The background of your thumb has appeared to change in position relative to your thumb. Specifically, it should have moved a fair distance to the right. Now, open both eyes and everything is back to where it should be in the original diagram. Now, if you close your right eye, the same thing will happen when you close your left, except the background moves in the opposite direction, to the left. This change in position, depending on how you view an object, is called parallax. Now, you may still be thinking, that's wonderful and all, but how would I have ever figured that out? Nobody positions their thumb and does exactly that. The thing is, parallax is very common in the world today. For example, when you're driving with your parents and you're watching everything out the window, the trees you see closest to you are moving very fast, whereas, say, in this case, the hills behind them are moving slower. This is also parallax. The position from which you are viewing these objects affects the appearance of them. If you are near the hills, however, and far and away from the trees, tra and travel the same distance, at the same speed, you would see the hills move faster than the trees in the background. But you may also be wondering, how does this connect to astronomy? Or even, how does this connect to science at all? Actually, it connects very well. Parallax is used every day by astronomers to determine the distance of nearby stars relative to Earth. How, you ask? Well, just like our background object in the first example, the stars move relative to the foreground. If we looked up at the night sky near sunrise at some point of the year, this star would be, in our case, on our left. But fast forward six months, where Earth is on the opposite end of the sun, and we look at sundown, we will see the star to our right. The lines here represent our point of vision at separate times during the year. Now, astronomers observe the position of stars during these two times, or the two times at which the star is farthest to the left or the right, or our viewpoint, and find the angle of those two intersecting lines. A closer star would have a larger angle, whereas a farther star would have a smaller angle. This angle is called the parallax angle. Now, since we are one astronomical unit away from the sun, and we know the distance the Earth has traveled in those six months, which is two astronomical units. Now, with this information and the parallax angle, astronomers have all they need to find the distance from the Earth to that star. Now, to find the actual distance, it involves a little bit of trigonometry, especially the use of tangent. You might remember this from sine, cosine, tangent, so Cartola. The formula to calculate this parallax angle is distance equals 2AU divided by tangent, tangent being opposite over adjacent. This being said, you now know how to calculate and understand parallax. Stars themselves, though, are very far away, immensely far away, and the parallax method can only be applied to stars less than 100 light years away from Earth. After that, the measurements are too small to derive a solid calculation.